name is Celia Beck and you've ran by from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And we've had a bit of a Doctor Who new tsunami over the last uh, few days. They dropped the trailer for the Festa special, the New Year special. I, I we, we, we the New Year special stuck in me. Stop calling it festive. You know, festive is a really over by New Year's. New Year's you're just kind of laying around going, oh god, uh, that's not really festive. Festive is, is Christmas. And I, I don't want to just want to point this out because you can't point this out too many times. I'm a freaking rabbi. <laughs> okay, I'm a freaking rabbi. I shouldn't be on board for Christmas. I really, really, really like Christmas. I think anybody doesn't. It's a bit strange about that. Anyway, so we've had a bit of a new tsunami. Uh, uh, Radio Times has dropped, I think, 12 articles in the last 48 hours. Far too many to go over in one video. So this is uh, this is a, a, a new ongoing series of at least two videos called Chris Chibnall's Ministry of Truth, where we look at the uh, 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 the official release. The official release is coming out of Cardiff, and we try and intuit what the hell's going on, what's really happening. I listen, most is kind of, you know, I mean, listen, most is kind of transparent and, and, and obvious, but yeah, we might have a bit of a laugh on the way. Before we get into it, though, can I ask you guys, can you hit the like button? That would be freaking fantastic. Can we hit the share button? That, well, when I say we, it's a bit condescending. I'll share it. <laughs> could you do it too? Thank you very much. Can you hit the share button? Uh, uh, and could you most Hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, say make a rabbi happy. Uh, um, which, you know, I, I think you probably woke up in the morning going, I, I, yeah, I don't really think about making rabbis happy. So, you know, I hope I've given you something extra. Hit the subscribe button. Now, if you do subscribe, if you do subscribe, uh, you know, other than you know, being blessed with uh, uh, riches and, and uh, you know, incredible luck, you know, of course, uh, you know, re results may vary, but I think you're probably, you know, you're probably going to do quite well by hitting that subscribe button. Um, the other thing you, you can do is enter my <laughs> weekly competitions. I should have given this prize away last night. I completely forgot. Okay, Thursday, I have a, a stream. I will give it away Thursday. Uh, it is Judge Dredd, the complete case files. Uh, volume 17, they reprint Judge Dredd, like all the Judge Dreads in order. So this is from, I don't know what year. This will be like, um, I'm guessing 97, 98. Uh, all the Judge Dredd stories from that year, including the mega epic uh, Judgment Day, which uh, was written by Garth Ennis, uh, has all the judges fighting zombies, all the judges from around the world. I always kind of think that's cool. Plus, crossover with Strontium Jog, bit bit of Johnny Allen for action in there for you. Uh, all you need to do to win this is subscribe to the channel, which is the reason I do these freaking competitions. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, and in the comments, leave the hashtag, a special hashtag we change for each uh, competition. The hashtag this week is Sabat. Sabat is the name of the uh, 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 of the villain uh, uh, in, in Judgment Day and Shalom because we have this uh, expression here in Islam we say Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom on Fridays uh, uh, and uh, so I thought we all do a riff on that Shabbat Shalom uh, if you don't know how to spell it don't worry if you get close I'm entering you and uh, it's in the video notes just copy and paste put it in the comments you will be entered tomorrow night tomorrow night I will do the prize draw I am sorry I've dragged my feet in it also while you're looking in the video notes while you're looking in the video notes can you just go check out this this little thing of beauty for me. It is my Indiegogo, which I'm opening up in uh, yeah, probably uh, yeah, probably about two weeks. Um, I have two two graphic novels over here, uh, Biblical and the Imperium, both freaking awesome graphic. I have to tell you, at first I was like, yeah, yeah, they're quite good. No, now I think they're freaking awesome. You know, like if you go, if you're not behind your work, why would you expect anybody else to be? Two freaking awesome graphic novels. Uh, I'm building up an email list uh, to keep people informed. Uh, I, look, I'm going to make them fun as well. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll make these emails fun. Uh, keep people informed about you know, the comings and goings of, of this of this Indiegogo. If you sign up, you get one of these uh, over here, one of these four art cards. Uh, uh, rather, you know, sexy art cards, which I which I quite like. Uh, now, there is a package in, in the Indiegogo where you, get, you can get both these... Uh, uh, graphic novels, uh, and if you do that, you get all four art cards anyway. You get an art card with any purchase, like if you sign up. Uh, but if you sign up, if you join the mailing list and you get that package where you get the four anyway, I'm going to do a fifth, I think, and I'm really leaning hard into Deanna Troy. Like, listen, people have been uh, lobbying for Seven of Nine. And these are based on, on, on what made me horny when I was... 13. Okay, basically, you know, Oreo in my formative years. It's seven or nine is too old. Seven or nine, that was that maybe horny when I was like in my you know, mid 20s. I'm looking for something in my teens. So I, I'm erring towards uh, uh, um, Deanna Troy from Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, uh, if I don't do that, it's going to be Victoria Waterfield in a sexy schoolgirl outfit. Because, you know, why not? How else do you want to see Victoria Waterfield, the 1960s companion? 
other than in a sexy schoolgirl outfit. I think anybody who says anything different, there's something wrong about them. And you need to take to some kind of psychotherapist. Okay, fine. So yeah, go go click over there, sign up for that. That'll be fan freaking tastic. Fine, so the first the first bit of news we're gonna talk about is this over here, this rumor um, that he's talked about in, in, in Radio Times that the doctor's going to face also uh, other monsters in uh, 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 in the festive special. Going to face a weeping angel, uh, a macro Cybermen. I, I'm like, yeah, really? No, listen, firstly, the doctor's hardly in it. From what I can tell, the doctor is in it. Not much. I think the BBC uh, uh, quite wisely I thought, let's keep uh, 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 keep Jodie under wraps as much as possible. It's uh, uh, she creates what's called consumer resistance. Consumer resistance. Uh, I think that's a fair way of putting it. Um, although this was filmed, I believe, before season twelve dropped, and nobody knew how badly it was going to go down. They knew it was going bad. They knew it wasn't going well. In the summer after season eleven, they they started working on the Time Lord Victorious. Uh, uh, marketing initiative, multi-platform thing. Uh, uh, did they start working on it then so they could work out how they could drop the ball on it so completely and screw it up and have it, like, fail? <laughs> uh, maybe, because they seem to put a lot, a lot of eff effort into that. So, uh, uh, But, you know, so I, I don't know why they thought of doing a Doctor Light episode before season 12 dropped. Did they really know she was doing bad? Probably, probably uh, uh, Chibnall was... Uh, uh, he, he kind of, he's kind of a... A uh, creative magpie. Uh, is that magpie? Yeah, where he goes to steal things from everywhere else. It, it, like, like a lot of season twelve. This is the best of Doctor Who redone very, very badly. <laughs> uh, so it's nowhere near as good as what he's ripping off. Um, so, so, uh, uh, so we got. So we had this uh, image from the. Um, uh, 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 the trailer, which we're going to look at, which is the source of this story. Uh, they say, firstly, there's going to be a weeping angel. It, the doctor's face is the weeping angel. And they say that because this kind of looks like a weeping angel. Does to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, that could be a weeping angel. Over here, that kind of looks like a Cyberman, you know. There's supposed to be a macro here somewhere. Is that a macro? Could be. I don't know. Uh, but here, the one that I really, really did like, and I always want to give praise. Whenever I can give praise, I always want to give praise uh, over here. This is clearly a Varga plant. I really, I clearly, I hopefully it's a Varga plant. That, that I actually thought was, was, was very cool. Um, but yeah, listen, they're not, she's not facing any bloody weeping angel. Are you out of your mind? This is Dr. Jody. <laughs> she can't deal with the Jadoon, let alone weeping bloody angels. What's she going to do? Fine. So the other bit of news that, uh, that I want to talk about is the departure at last, at last, of Tosin Cole and Bradley Walsh, which I don't know how this is news, right? I do not know how we're calling this news. We've known about this for a long... I thought Bradley Walsh even, like, uh, spoke about it publicly and Tosin Cole got that job with HBO. Like, like we knew uh, we knew, we knew it was happening. Uh, uh, and uh, and yet, you know, they, they presented it as a story. Um, so they actually had about two or three stories in Radio Times about this. We're just going to read one, okay? We're just going to read the one um, dealing with Jodie Whittaker says she was absolutely devastated by Bradley Walsh and Tosin Cole's uh, Doctor Who exit. Uh, listen, darling, if you're that devastated, yeah, maybe you want to go too, really? And maybe the party's over. Kevin, Kevin, I, I, honestly, I was absolutely devastated that you didn't decide to go. So you know, if the absolutely devastated is a uh, uh, is, is a factor in anything, uh, please please take that in, take that into account. That'd be very very nice. Um, Whitaker and Yaz actress Mandy Gill responds to their co-stars' departure. Uh, yeah, run, run, Tosin, run, Bradley, just get out of here. Uh, isn't Bradley Walsh uh, uh, hosting Blankety Blank on Christmas Day, the slot where people thought Doctor Who was going to go? Yeah, Bradley Walsh basically has uh, uh, um, the festive television all wrapped up. Uh, the Doctor and Yaz will be experiencing the TARDIS very differently in Series 30. We all know! What, I, what, do you, what, do you, what are you getting excited about? Oh, this is written by Patrick... Uh, Cremona, not uh, not not Hugh Fullerton. I think at the end it's going to say was written with Hugh Fullerton because I've seen, seen his name on a few articles recently. With the BBC confirming that Ryan and Graham will be leaving the show after the upcoming spell. Yeah, we again not not really news. Um, now that Jodie Whittaker and Amanda Gill have spoken out about the departure of Bradley Walsh, Tosas, Bradley Walsh, and Tosin Cole. Tosin Cole, especially, you know, like oh boy. Did they, like, he's a good-looking lad, Tosin Cole. I, 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 maybe he's an act, a good actor. I haven't seen him 
uh, do anything so I know he's got much of it. Listen, he's a, I don't think he's that much of a spineless cuck in real life. So uh, that must be a bit of acting he's doing. Or maybe he is. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm, I really am intrigued to see him in this HBO show he's going to be in. I, I would love to see what his performance is going to be like. Um, who have been traveling through time and space with him since 2018. Uh, I tell you, Bradley, you 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 nailed it, mate. Okay, run, run. Whitaker said she was absolutely devastated by the departure, explaining how uh, she was reduced to tears on set, and they thought, oh, for God's sake, really? <sighs> you know, you know. You might not know this. You might not know this because they haven't really uh, focused on this much. Uh, yeah, they, they they hardly ever mention it, but. Uh, um, not that I'm assuming it was gender. Not that I'm assuming it was gender. But I think Jodie Whittaker uh, uh, is a lady, and, and you know, I, I think what it, yeah it used to be when 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 women were actually first coming into the workplace, right? And they, uh, they which was what forty years ago, you know, it was like now it's not a big deal. Uh, but when, you know, women w would say like I I you know they will not cry. You know, crying is a bad thing. It makes all women look bad. Jodie, Jodie. Oh, God's sake, you, you you had, like, every... Not you, the Chibnall or the, uh, uh, um, the uh, publicity department couldn't say your name without saying the first uh, first woman to play Doctor Who for two years. So, like, saying that, it doesn't make women look good that you were crying. <laughs> You're crying. Uh, just probably, you know, the last scene with, uh, uh, with myself... And those actors, I mean, again, this isn't real. You know, this is only make-believe, right? You know, the, you, you can act it. These are people. You just call them up. You know, they're, they're not, you're not going away in time and space. You know, they, if they die in the show, they're not really dead. It's all pretend. I Maybe she doesn't know. Honestly, honestly, I just think she's a dummy. Really? I just think she's a bit of a dummy. Uh, she must know. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine she doesn't? Do you really think she's Doctor Who? He, I'm Doctor Who. Here's my son excluder. Uh, oh, I'm devastated. Uh, without going into the, uh, any specifics about uh, anything to do with the character and what happens, just purely knowing that uh, it was the last scenes with myself and these uh, those actors. So they leave it together, apparently. Gone into some detail, you freaking moron. Uh, both of them had to carry me to the... Tr what? Both of them had to carry you to the trailer, she said. That's okay as a joke, but that shouldn't happen in real life. That's weird. That's weird, darling. You shouldn't be doing that. I've not cried like that. I've not cried like that for such a long time. Uh, you, you, you know, you know. The last time we 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 cried like that, uh, uh, all from fifty five, and we didn't stop. We didn't stop. You know, try looking at fans, and, and, and they and you'll see see true grief and mourning because, uh, in the wake of your stunning and brave doctor. I mean, Brad uh, Brad couldn't cope with it at all, really. And Tosin was Brad. He was fine. Let me tell you, Bradley Walsh was fine. He was like, yeah, I mean, yeah. What he was doing was called acting. What he was doing was acting. <laughs> it's because he's not in getting out of this. Crap. Show, uh, 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 like uh, maybe too late, but like, well, make that move to blankety blank, <laughs> Bradley. Uh, and Tosin was like, uh, I really can't cope with you getting so sad. I, I, I can, yeah, it, I, I, who cares? Okay, I mean, look, I, it, I don't walk around saying, Oh, how can I make Jodie Whittaker sad? But I don't really care that she is, <laughs> you know, like, why would I? I, I mean, I'm sorry that you're sad that professional acting goes on and people want to do like oh my god it's so weird and stupid um uh, I, really can't go into, uh, I think that sums up how I feel. There was not a sense of relief in any way. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, the other first person brought up a sense of relief. I, I think you had a sense of relief. Uh, and then I was like, don't leave me. You know, you're leaving them. Who is talking? Is this Tosin Cole or is this... Uh, 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 that sounds more like... Um, Jodie Whittaker. Uh, I think something I feel, there was a lot. There was not a sense of relief. I, 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 who, who knows? Talking. Um, Whittaker added that she felt bereaved by uh, the departure, uh, in part because uh, Walsh and Co had started the series at the same time as her. That's so. Yeah, really. Have you ever seen this freaking show before? Companions come, companions go. I mean, it was a big deal when uh, 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 when Billy Piper left, right? Because she was so integral. Uh, to the 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 revamping of of you know the re revitalization of Doctor Who, uh, when she left, that was a big deal. 
Uh, look, Bradley Cole, uh, yeah, Bradley Walsh and Tosin Cole. Bradley Walsh is probably a bad news for me leaving because he's the only one that has any way connected with anybody still left watching this disaster area. Right. Uh, so, 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 so is that so unique? She said, how is it so unique? You start a broad church with everybody. It's like, okay, whatever. She said, everything to do with, you know, uh, all of our journey have been together. Uh, and the fam, and the fa uh, and have been as a family. We've clicked like a family. I'm gra I'm so glad you're having a good time. Okay, I'm really. It's nice to have a good time. Uh, we're really not. We we are really really not. Uh, and Gil, the uh, Gil explain. Oh God, uh, uh, Mandy Gil explaining something is like it, it, it's it's painful. It's absolutely. In fact, you know, if you want something to be really funny, right? It's really really funny. Get a, that's a serious heavy issue. Uh, uh, get, you know, uh, uh, get Mandy Gill to just get, explain it to you. Yeah, get it how, like, you know, AIDS kills her. And then it won't seem so bad. Because it'll be like, she's such a dummy. Oh, my God. She's such an incredible... I, I'm just going by what she posted on social media. It's like, e, I don't know why people are racist. Because then, oh, God, everything says it's so stupid. Um, uh, and Gill explained, uh, even though she had not... Uh, she's not as uh, 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 not emotional as a person here. Mandy Gill was like, we was confused why people were getting upset by Doctor Who. Like, yeah, you know, what? Like, why was the the TV show? I mean, like, causing emotions to happen? Well, that's actually your job. That's what you're supposed to be doing. I tell you, it's really cruel that they like. The, yeah, the, she's she found her 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 uh, her spot in life in 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 Hollyoaks. That's where she should be. This is just, it's embarrassing. It's so, it's like punching above your weight, really, isn't it? I think that's how you subscribe it. Uh, although she admitted she's uh, still too early to tell how much they'll be missed. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, God, I can't wait to see the rating for this disaster area. It's going to be hilarious. I'm not really that uh, that sort of emotional person, but I, even I was even I was like, this is really sad. I'll never see you again. Why do you think that? Get Like, What? Yeah, have you ever heard of the interwebs? You, know, you can just phone him up, say, Bradley, how you doing? Yeah, Bradley, uh, uh, could you give me some like strange, uh, uh, misplaced, unequivocal praise for no apparent reason? I really enjoyed that when your character did it in, in Doctor Who. You don't get it? Oh, oh, no problem, Coco. Here you go. Uh, you're the bestest ever. I'll never see you again. You're so busy, Brad. Always film. Yes, he's so busy. Uh, uh, something that I don't think is in your future. <laughs> Okay, darling. I don't think it's in your future. Uh, but it's too. Uh, but it's been too soon to miss them. Yeah, you only stopped filming a year ago. Like, what happened in the past year? Uh, we do have this WhatsApp group, so we're all speaking all the time. Well, there you go. Daisy, <laughs> just what I said. Yes, yeah, it's not such a big deal. And obviously, because of the whole lockdown, anyway, uh, we wouldn't have seen. Uh, oh boy, look at this girl. Wouldn't have seen each other any other time. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, you can't get much past Bandit Gill, can you? You've got to get up pretty early in the morning to uh, to 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 outwit her. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Uh, so I think it's too soon for me to realise the impact of them uh, of not having them because we're just constantly sending messages. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Oh. <laughs> She's, she's not a clever girl. She's not a clever girl. You know, I think that's fair to say. She's not a clever girl. Fine, the second piece of news that we're going to look at is, are the Daleks fake in Doctor Who Festive Special? So, um, I wonder what they mean. Are they fake? It, it, it's, uh, I, the the rumour was that there's a uh, they're going to redo the Dalek origins with a female Carlin scientist on top of Davros. Um, my guess is this. My guess is this. That the uh, these Daleks are man-made using the uh, uh, template that they found from the uh, the resolution Dalek, uh, and uh, somehow the Daleks ha have found them and been connected to them, and they've been plotting this uh, all the time. Doctor Jody won't be there at all. This is this mystery will be uh, taken on and solved by Yaz, uh, leading a team of uh, Bradley Walsh and Tosin Cole and Captain Jack, right? And uh, Yaz is going to be the leader and the best. Ever. My guess is she's going to she's going to work out how to fly the TARDIS as well. That's my guess. Um, let's see what it's got to say about the Daleks. Are the Daleks fake in the Doctor New Doctor Who uh, festive special? Well, they they do look it, don't they? I mean, look at that. Doesn't look, it looks like a Dalek that you see on a. Uh, 
on like a rather crappy fair ride, you know, somewhere there's like it's some like yeah, Bogner Regis, some somewhere like some dismal rainy seaside town. Yeah, you, know, you know, you get on this thing and it look and they do a Dalek and it looks really nothing like a Dalek. Uh, where a little bit of the and it was like always annoying when you're a little kid, a little kid, you might your mother goes, oh look, there's a Dalek, you can ride a Dalek, and you're like. That's not a bloody Dalek, was it? That's like a cone head. What is that? that yeah, and they put you on it. No, I'm not on a Dalek. I, no, you're on a Dalek. Yeah, normals don't really get it. Uh, we're a little suspicious that these new Daleks may not be the real deal, and the real threat is still to come. It's by Hugh Fullerton. Yeah, the chilliest of the chills. Um, the funniest idea, what to expect from the upcoming Doctor Who's Christmas special, or rather New Year special, Revolution of the Dalek, oh, which is how Dodie called it. It's actually called Revolution of the Daleks. Uh, but yeah, she you can be forgiven. She can be forgiven for getting the name wrong. Of, after all, she was in it for what, you know, 10 minutes? He probably did a day's worth of filming. Uh, that's really what it looks like, isn't it? It really does look that, that way. Um, with the, I, I can't wait to see what the, the ratings are going to be. Liz, okay. Just a little word about the ratings. Uh, in any normal situation, you can expect there to be a 30% decline from season opener to season opener, right? Between it, it, you, especially there's no sign of the, the decline halting. So the, this one, uh, last year's Spyfall 1 got, what, 5.8, I think? 5.8 consolidate, 5.9. Uh, so uh, you take off from that um like 35 percent it comes out to like 3.8 right that's their best case scenario which is one of the lowest ratings of all time but the lowest ratings of all time uh the over take off like 500 000 for that for the overnight so you look at 3.4 that i think is their best case scenario um it could be in the twos I, I really hope it's in the twos i hope it's really low oh god it's gonna be hilarious here's the thing though i'm not gonna I, I, the, when i first uh, find out about it it's gonna be the next day because it's happening uh new year's day is on friday night new year's eve is on friday no new year's day is on friday night on friday uh, and friday night i am i go offline for for the sabbath so i'm not going to be able to watch it till like saturday night like five in the afternoon by that time the rating should be out oh i can't wait i can't wait to see what it's going to do oh it's going to be hilarious um da -da -da. all right we need a revolution with the first look trailer i think it's the only look trailer we're going to get giving us uh plot hints and the few character reveals for this adventure yeah one of the, the again a, a sign that they have no clue what they're doing they're bringing back the trumper like villain the 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 first sign that we were in serious serious trouble with this uh doctor yeah they have no clue they have no clue what they're freaking doing the dogs in jail with the fan back on earth with captain jack and the daleks are on the mark. But which Daleks ex exactly? It's less clear. You'll see we're not entirely convinced this new look uh, black Daleks de debuting uh, in, the, in the special are real Daleks after all. Instead, they may just be a copy. Ah, okay, so it's basically telling us what we think is going to happen. Uh, we know it sounds seriously weird, but let us explain. In the festive special trailer, we see Harriet Walters' character, Joe Patterson, who may or may not be Prime Minister, but it seems likely unveiling two new Daleks as new defence drones uh, set to protect the UK from outside threats. Oh, really? It's an anti-immigration thing? Oh, really? Oh, God, I hate it. I just like, yeah, let's bring diversive modern-day politics into freaking everything. I mean, listen, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. I don't know how we got to this state in the world where you said, where if one would say they believe uh, uh, there should be fair, free immigration into America, into into England, uh, I, people should just follow the procedure to emigrate legally. Uh, but we, we are welcoming to everyone. I think that's really what England's always been like. It's very welcoming. Uh, uh, you know, like, and now that is apparently the racist position, right? Uh, if you If you say... Do you want any kind of uh, res not restriction, even like uh, mod uh, uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Any kind of uh, 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 idea of what's happening with immigration? You don't just have open borders and allow people to swarm in left and right without like taking any notice or any data whatsoever. You're racist. I I okay, Chibnall, I understand that's your point of view because you're mad. You're completely insane. Uh, pretty much outside threats. Okay. 
Fans were quick to note that this seems like a, a, a similar brand to the 2010 uh, episode, Victory of the Dalek. Well, it kind of is. Yeah, again, Chimnall, uh, uh, kind of doing like the uh, cover versions, doing bad cover versions of much better Doctor Who, uh, which saw the Doctor's greatest throws pretend to be human-made uh, uh, human weapons. But what if, uh, if this time it's true? What if the UK government has actually created their own Daleks which go rogue during the episode? It did look like there are actual Daleks in there. Like we saw Dalek mutants in the trailer, right? We saw them opening up the hatch and seeing probably a Dalek inside. Um, it seemed like the Dalek mutants were there. So I don't know what to tell you. Certainly there are a few hints uh, to this effect in the trailer above. Chris Nulls, villain, Robertson and the sidekick, Leo uh, Rugazzo, Nathan Stewart Jarrett, who's a really good actor. I feel very bad for you, Nathan Stewart uh, Jarrett, that you've been uh, put in the position. Now listen, I, uh, uh, I'm going to make a prediction. But just because his skin is black, right? just because his skin is dark, I'm going to make a prediction that he's going to be emasculated, he's going to be uh, effemin effeminate uh, and lack agency. Because... That is basically the only way uh, the entertainment industry is allowing black men to be portrayed in 2020. Why do they do that? I don't bloody know. That's the choice they're making. It's, okay, it's cause, maybe because they're racist. Maybe, I think, could be because they're racist. Uh, I've seen opening the Dalek shells at one point and point uh, um, uh, pouring over what appears to be a Dalek movement in a, in a small tank, suggesting... Uh, then there are some involvement in creating them and generally speaking the new Dalek design looks a lot more man-made than previous versions oh, yeah, who cares uh, there's there's the connection to the 2019 uh, episode resolution speak to Radio Times showrunner Chris Chimnall and executive producer Matt Stevens, the the uh, 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 the dumb and dumber of Doctor Who uh, uh, producers uh, reason Matt Strievers noted that this new episode had uh, had a close connection to the early Dalek okay fine so they just confirmed it uh, we saw the hibernating re uh, reconnaissance Dalek rebuild itself from spare parts or an attack Earth or attack a few people on Earth um, by the way the Dalek mutant on in that episode uh, against the wall very 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 good yeah again Whenever they do something good, I want to say that's good. But it doesn't matter, uh, you know, how much they do that isn't bad. You still got Jodie Whittaker, who is just terribly miscast, right? Terribly miscast, going all the way through it. Uh, I, I, I've always said those Sidemen design from Timeless Children and uh, whatever uh, villain, whatever, whatever it was, and these last Cyber, Lone Cybermen, all well designed, all good ideas, uh, well designed. Yes, put in, you know, again, if you you put some diamonds in the, in a pile of poo, you're going to get your hands dirty. You're trying to get those diamonds right. You gotta, you better hope you have some gloves because that's basically what happened. It's just tainted by, you know, the awfulness of it. Uh, we knew uh, when we said goodbye to Reconnaissance Starlets uh, that it jetted, uh, when it was jettisoned uh, out of the TARDIS doors into a supernova at the end of, the, of uh, Resolution, that uh, that would not be the end of it, Streamers added. Oh, what you mean? You might have Daleks more. Yeah, <laughs> Daleks might come back again. Well, wow. who who could have saw that eventuality? So how does this uh, this all fit together? Uh, uh, well, here's our theory. In Resolution, the Dalek... Uh, no, in, uh, in Resolution, the Reconnaissance Dalek claimed one of its many weapons, uh, one of its many weaponry from a company called MDZ. Uh, rebuilding a shell before defeating uh, and thrown into a supernova. Okay. However, its damage casing was apparently left behind at C G C again. Here's your problem you've got going on right now. You're 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 threading continuity through uh, things that people don't care about and people don't remember, right? Rosalie Davis didn't really thread that much continuity and, and through anything until it was in the natural consciousness, and I really think. Here's an example. Here's as it is an example you want to follow, right? I think that's where you want to go. Uh, and try and copy it after seeing the destructive capabilities. Okay. Notably, Patterson's description of the Daleks as a drone echoes how it was described by the attacking soldiers in Resolution, while the new look Daleks uh, also closely appear to be uh, match the one off res uh, Resolution Dalek rather. Uh, than the more common bronze Daleks. Well, we have seen them together, right? So maybe, maybe the uh, the re revolution of Daleks is they the people uh, hu humanity makes uh, uh, Daleks 
makes their own Daleks, and then the Daleks come to reclaim them, and they join forces, creating a re revolution. And the Daleks, and they, they're the new stunning and brave Daleks. Could be, could be. Uh, rather than uh, rather than common bronze one we've seen in re recent years, or the Teletubby ones. Uh, what if the new design is just an attempt to copy and... Uh, uh, refine the battle. Okay, well, I understand. Christian has certainly hinted that something like this could be the case. Uh, it harks back to re uh, reconnaissance Dalek, uh, uh, the reconnaissance Dalek in Resolution Dalek. It's almost as if it's like that might be a plot point. Oh, God. Yeah, again, who do you think that you're, like, uh, getting excited? And the weird, here's the weird thing. Here's the really weird thing about this era of Doctor Who. They treat it like it's popular, right? They treat it like it's at the height of its popularity, like it's David Tennant at its absolute best. By the way, Two episodes into the David Tennant River Song box set from Big Finish. Frickin' awesome. Frickin' awesome. That is David Tennant at his best. I'm loving it. Can't wait to listen to the third part. Um, yeah, all that, like, uh, we wanted the audience to see the origins of the reconnaissance Daleks, uh, Stevens added uh, Stevens. Uh, because, in a sense, that Dalek gives birth to this. Okay, so just saying, this next iteration, we see him revolution of the Daleks. Okay, fine. So you basically just spoiled it. Well done. Well done there, Stevens. Uh, uh, I would love to see what you were like in school. I can't imagine you were that good. <laughs> okay? I can't imagine that, that people go, oh, I love that Matt Stevens. Uh, uh, yeah, he's a smarty pants. I don't think those are the words that people have ever, ever said. Uh, after seeing how quickly that Dalek took out the uh, armed forces uh, and after being essentially handed the technology, why wouldn't any government try to make their own, uh, make their own possibly even down to the genetically engineered squid that pilots uh, to, uh, to move around? That could be. This could be uh, how the shady Jack Robertson got involved. Oh, who cares? I mean, who cares? Got involved. I, I don't know. It's like it just Chibnall doesn't believe the data of his own eyes that this this has not gone well. This is not going well for them. Uh, and how likely these darlings, just uh, just like the uh, originals, would decide to act on their murderous her her murderous heritage? Okay, it seems certainly plausible, though there is one ma uh, the one major hole in the theory. If the Daleks aren't the usual model from Scaro, why do we see Dalek spaceships in trailer? I just told you. Uh, if they are really knockoffs, they'll be uh, uh, they'll they'll already be on Earth. Uh, if they're really knockoffs, they'll already be on Earth. So it's out, and that's probably the Bronze Star that's coming to. To, to see them and it looks like they join forces then okay uh, but there may be an explanation for this leaked uh, leaked filming pictures back in 29 appeared to show one of the new black darts is facing off with a crowd of more familiar bronze dark. it looked like it wasn't facing off it looked like he was part of that crowd right again who cares uh, suggesting that some sort of confrontation between the two Okay, so now we're going back to uh, uh, Revelation of Darks. Okay, fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, it's the greatest hits, baby. Greatest hits from a shitty cover band. That is Chris Chibnall. Uh, and while many at the time uh, theorized that this could be some sort of civil war, maybe the truth is simpler. The real Darks have just arrived to, uh, uh, to protect their parent. What? No, they're not the parent. They're the... They're the oh, whatever. Who cares? Okay, how much more? Nonsense, we've got to go through. Um, adding fuel to the fryer to this theory is the fact that the regular Dalek operator, Barnaby, has confirmed his involvement in the episode, despite the new Daleks being uh, uh, remote control. Yeah, we've seen the bronze Daleks! We know Bradley Cole's leaving, Br uh, Bradley Wilson does the Cole's leaving. We know that none of this is surprising anyone. Anybody reading this already knows. Most people, most normies don't really care. You just made this for the headline. Um, to make it look like something's going on. Uh, has been involved in an episode. I mean, actually, isn't, didn't Barnaby Edwards get in a lot of trouble with the BBC? Uh, one of the Dalek operators did, and he got because he encoded this message into Doctor Who magazine, saying uh, uh, the BBC are worldwide uh, see uh, worldwide sea words. You know, like if you, it, what was it? Was that Barn? I thought it was Barnaby Edwards. Guess all's forgiven and forgotten now, Barnaby Edwards. Good for you, mate. Uh, has confirmed... That was, yeah, it's in Doctor Who magazine that happened. You should Google it. It's a bit weird. Uh, has uh, one of involvement, uh, despite the remote, the slimmer remote control ones. If uh, Edwards and his fellow operators are on the scene, it stands to reason that more traditional Daleks are... We've seen the pictures! Uh, like, have you had a head injury? I guess that, that that's basically... It's one of the questions you should be asked. 
uh, when, when you have you when you've been in a car crash and I'm worried that you're concussed. Uh, they go, D -d -d have you seen seen uh, uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like it? Said, yeah, it's the best ever. Get that person to a hospital. That they they need a cat scan instantly, instantly. Uh, they, that's probably you know new new medical procedure. I think you're welcome. I'm uh, helping you out there. Um, maybe they need it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, before uh, if I'm losing the directs, uh, sees Ryan Graham and he has Tosin Cole, Bradley Walter, Mandel Gill, recognizing the uh, these drones as Daleks, which they would because they've seen them before, and trying to stop the project. That's exactly what's, what it looks like it's going on before the whole thing inspires the real Daleks to come and destroy. Uh, what uh, what they see as inferior copies? Maybe I, I, who knows? Uh, maybe they 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 uh, they'd even come uh, be able to hijack the new black Daleks, turning them against humanity. Okay, fine. Or maybe uh, we're wrong, and this whole thing is really about the Daleks under uh, undercover once once more. Um, whatever the truth. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's about the Daleks undercover. I, again, I think Christian takes takes plot points throughout Doctor Who history and then just reuses them badly with low quality uh, what, uh, whatever the truth and uh, whether or not these uh, versions stick around beyond the episode or I doubt they'll stick around beyond Chibnall's tenure that's for sure uh, what, one thing's for sure after Revelling the Daleks we have earned more da uh, we have even more Dalek designs to argue about but listen, we're not arguing if you like it I like it I don't really care um, want to learn more about blah blah blah? No, I don't want to. Learn. I don't want to learn more any more about this nonsense. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave Doctor Who fandom alone. Uh, but don't leave me alone in terms of of my Indiegogo. Go check it out. Go check it out right now. Click that link. Add your email address. Uh, uh, riches and 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 uh, uh, luck will before you. I'm sure of it. Of course. You know, uh, 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 um, you know, experiences may vary. Experiences may but clip, but add your email address anyway. My name is Ian Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.